Hey folks, today we're gonna try to fix our water heater. So right now we're not getting any hot water and it very likely could be that one of the coils has gone bad. So we're gonna open this up and we're gonna take a look. But first, we gotta go to our breaker panel, which is right here. And we need to find which one the water heater is. And that one says water heater. We're gonna turn that off. And then we can go over here and actually too, I could have just unplugged it and that also should work <laughs> because if it's not plugged in, can't really get juice. But we're gonna need to open up the top panel here and the bottom panel and we're gonna have to test to see that the coils are still working. Okay, when you remove the plate, you're gonna see something like this. There'll be some insulation You'll pull the insulation out, set that aside, and then you're gonna see a plastic cover. The plastic cover also has to come off. Okay. At this point, you can use a voltmeter or tester to test the red and black wires to ensure that the power is turned off. Okay, so right away I'm noticing there's a lot of moisture on this bottom one. That's not a good sign. Okay, so this is our water heater. We're not getting hot water. Here's the top thermostat, the bottom coil on the top, and then we got another thermostat it looks like and then we have we have our coil and water dripping out okay so next we can take our voltmeter and we can take our two little probes here our positive and negative and we can put them up against the heating element to see whether or not our heating element has a normal level of resistance or ohms measurement so we can use this chart here to see kind of what our measurement should be. So if you know you have a 240 volt water uh, heater tank and your heating element is 4,500 watts, then you should have this measurement here on your uh, ohms reading. If it's way off and it's not, not anything close to that, then you probably are gonna need to replace that element. Okay, so next bit of troubleshooting. We need to be able to drain this tank so that we can take out this heating element. So we take a garden hose, we thread it on. I also have turned off the water up here so that no more water enters into the tank. So there's the water coming out of the water heater. So I'll have a link in the video description below for several of these heating elements and where you can find them uh, in case you don't have a hardware store near you. But for the most part, the parts are relatively universal and they fit a lot of different brands. The big thing you need to pay attention to is the wattage. And you can even replace thermostats. So this is the heating element and this is the tool that helps remove the heating element. So simply using a flathead screwdriver to go around there and then it fits right on over top of the heating element and then we're going to loosen it up okay after loosening this up a bit there's it's letting air in through here and more water is coming out there is kind of like an airlock in the system. I tried to get rid of the airlock by opening up one of the faucets. Okay, this is what the previous heating element looked like. You can see it was split. It was in bad shape. Here's what the new one looks like. Okay, so here is the new element. I took a vacuum and I put a rag over this area and I tried to suck out any moisture that might have been in that area using a shop vac because I don't want 
any components in here to harbor moisture and to rust. So we can now slide the heating element in and then we'll be able to thread it in using our tool that we got. Okay, now before we turn the electricity on, we need to make sure we put the water back on because you do not want to have electricity flowing into your elements before you have water. Um, because if they're not submerged, they will burn out. So now we're filling up the tank. I'm gonna look for leaks. If I see any water pouring out of here, I know that we have a problem. I already closed the valve on the spigot so I can remove my garden hose. Okay, now we just need to put the covers back on over top and put the insulation back in on both the upper and the lower. And then we can put our cover plates back on. So basically, we're just reversing the disassembly process. So now we're getting rid of all the air until we get constant flow. We're getting closer. Notice the muddy kind of water. That's probably from this breaking down in the water. It will clear up though. Okay, I don't hear much more air, so after that we should be good.